Um, hey, what's, <laughs> what's going on, everybody? Uh, so the other day I made a post in the FBA Heroes Facebook group, and uh, I made another post today, this morning, about it being removed. And it's uh, it's been quite controversial, and I didn't think it would be. And uh, I've actually had a lot of support in it, and uh, I thought it would be torn. Um, I had a few people initially sort of telling me to shut up and just go on with it. But then, maybe apart from those two people, I've had sort of an overwhelming uh, majority on my side saying, like, yeah, it was stupid of them to remove it. Um, also, please ignore the mic. I'm literally just holding it because I can't seem to pick up sound if I lay it down. Um, so the post I got removed was... Uh, I, still th I still don't know why it was removed. But the post was about... Uh, I listed 10... 10 tips that helped me when I first got into business and that I still use uh, in business today that still help me. So I thought free information, people could benefit from it, why not share it? And then within 36 hours, uh, it was gone. And uh, it had 127 likes, uh, likes and loves combined. So I'll show you, um, you can pause the screen. There. So that was a screenshot that I just happened to be able to take because my internet on my phone was off when I loaded my internet. So it was still, that page was still available even though they had deleted it. Um, so it, it ended up on 127 likes, which for me I thought was phenomenal because I'm just this nobody uh, that I made a random post and it was so well received. Um, but before I get into any further, I wanted to say I'm not hating on Derek. <laughs> I'm definitely not hating on Derek. Uh, I don't believe it was Derek's choice to take down uh, the post. He doesn't. I don't think he's active in his is in his own Facebook group. And again, that's no disrespect to Derek. I know he's a busy guy. He's got thousands of members, um, and I know that he has admins that run his group for him. So I don't. I'm not blaming Derek at all. And I really didn't expect it to be this controversial. I actually love the guy. I've watched all of his videos. I have ever since he first started his channel. Um, I've supported every single one of his videos. So I want to get that out clear the air, as it were, because uh, I don't want any any mixed information out there. Derek, I love you if you're watching. I doubt you're even watching, but I love you. And uh, your videos have helped me. And I, I just hope that I can help someone else. That's, that's why I'm starting this. Um, but in light of the post being removed, I have somehow managed to remember all 10 points um, and I've, I've written them down this time in my Pokemon book because I have a small child and this is appropriate. So, um, without further ado, we'll get into the list. So, point number one, as you can see on the screenshot if you paused when I showed my phone. Um, so, point number one, don't approach your supplier as the CEO or um, the company owner. And there's actually two reasons why, and I didn't think to mention the second reason when I made the post, and it's actually quite cheeky, and I do it quite often, and it gets me better prices. So th the first reason is that suppliers aren't stupid, and if you message them and say, hey, I'm the CEO, but I'm only looking for 500 units, they're going to be like, okay, well, you're not really a CEO, because even if you were testing a product, if you're a CEO, you've got dollar, and if you've got dollar, 500 units is nothing. You're going to be looking for thousands of units. So, they're, they're, you know, they're not dumb. And because they're not dumb and they know you're lying, they're going to rip you off and they're going to give you an extortionate price. On the flip side of that, if you approach them first as a sourcing agent um, and you say, hi, I'm a sourcing agent, um, you don't even have to introduce the company. Just say, I'm a sourcing agent, I've been given a strict budget um, and I'm looking for X amount of units. What price can you give me? If they don't respond well to that um, and they give you a slightly higher price than you're looking for, this is where you can get kind of cheeky. Uh, and I've done it before and it's worked really well. Maybe it's unethical, eh, you know, whatever. You can email them again, this time as the CEO, and say, hi, my sourcing agent has just emailed you um, and I've given him or her a strict budget and um, the quote you've given us is over that budget. 
is there any way you could uh, reduce your fees? Um, in saying this, you have to express um, the longevity to your business plan. Uh, they have to be able to see that you're going to be in business for years to come. I'm not saying you need to rattle off a five-year business projection, but they need to know that you're serious about progressing in business with them as your partner. So if you can do those things, they are much more likely to give you a better price. And it's not it's not about getting the best price from them on your first order. It's just about avoiding getting ripped off. So don't worry too much about getting the best price yet because the better price will come eventually. The more and more orders you start to make, the more you can uh, build a relationship with them uh, and the lower your prices will get. <coughs> ah. um, point number two, contact a minimum of 10 suppliers. Um, like I said in the post, there's no quantitative uh, limit, but there is a minimum and I would say that minimum is 10. The reason being is much like I was just saying in point number one about prices, you want to make sure you're not being ripped off. So if you message 10, in those 10 suppliers, that's enough for there normally to be an outlier. And you'll see in that outlier, that's the guy that's trying to rip you off and get loads of money out of you. So the, the nine, they're where you're going to base your average price on. And that will give you an estimate of what you're actually looking to spend. Um, even if you're not planning on buying from all nine of these suppliers, if they've got a similar product to what you're after, just go ahead and message them. Say you've got a quote, um, you've got a quota on how many units you want, what price you're looking at investing, and see what they say back to you. Once you get those nine uh, responses, then you know who's ripping you off and who's an honest seller. Uh, point number three, once your listing gets to Amazon, pay for um, a professional photographer or editor to come in and make your photos um, look much better. So what you can do is um, ask your supplier to take some photos, so that's fine. Um, I, I do that. When those photos are taken, send them to um, a graphics designer or a photo editor. They will make those photos 10 times better um, and they can even add some more of their own photos if they've got some stock photos. Alternatively, you can just when you when you get your sample product, send your sample product to a photographer. If they're local, go with go with um, your product and visit them personally. That way, you can um, describe. In, it's just easier to to describe how you want your photos, and you can see them being done. Um, so, point number three: pay for photos. You know, you have to consider it an investment, much like you did Jungle Scout or Viral Launch or whatever else you've invested in up until this point. You have to pay to make money. It's just the way it works. So pay for pay for high quality photos because eventually they'll pay for themselves, trust me. Um, so continuing from your photos is point four, which is photo selection. I've not seen a single person cover this and I don't know why because it's such a huge topic. Photos help um, your listing convert so much. They're one of the, the key points to conversion along with your title and your keyword selection. So why are we not careful with our photo selection? So the tip here is to build your photos around your keywords. So if you had um, a cordless razor, one of your one of your photos could be a guy shaving in the car because it's cordless and it has a bigger proximity. So as long as the keywords back that up, that it's a cordless uh, shaver, you need to be putting the, the image in your customer's mind that maybe they've not even thought of. So uh, point number four, I believe that was, um, photo selection based on your keywords. Um, let's have a look. Okay, point number five, writing um, a good copy requires you to know the difference between your product features and your product benefits. I won't get too much into this because I made another video on this already. But essentially, product feature is what the, the product is. It's it's the feature of the product. The benefit is why why that feature um, is beneficial to me. So again, if I go back to that cordless razor uh, example, if you have a cordless razor, the benefit is that it has no cord. Uh, sorry, the feature is that it has no cord. The benefit is that you can shave outside of your normal proximity, which is probably your bathroom. So. 
like I, said, I won't go too much into that because I made another video on that, um, where I, I um, where I include another example. Um, right, uh, point number six, uh, getting into emails now. <coughs> so uh, again, nobody talks about this, and I don't know why because it's such a big point. Optimize your email open rates. Again, I have a video on this, so I'm not going to get too much into it here. But typically, the email rate, email open rate in America is only 15%. You need to be at least double that for you to be getting consistent reviews. Um, I'll leave it as that. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll link, I'll link my other video on email open rate optimization. So check that out after you check this out. Um, on the back end of that, uh, the next point is which is what we are now point seven I don't know um, optimize your emails for uh, mobile devices so there are some really big statistics around this um, I think it's 67 percent at the moment of emails are opened uh, via mobile device which is huge um, if you're not optimizing your emails for your mobile you're missing out on a massive opportunity there so 67% of emails are opened via phone. Only 20% of those emails typically are optimized for mobiles or are mobile friendly. If you're not optimizing your emails for your mobile, you're missing out on a massive market there. And your review rate, um, your conversion for re reviews is really gonna suffer. So uh, make sure you're optimizing your um, emails for mobile. I use FeedbackWiz and I've been emailing them recently. Um, if you've been up to date with my recent post in um, the Heroes group, you'll know. Um, what they told me is that their templates are pre-optimized for mobile or any device. Um, so they said that their their mo um, their emails, which are based on the templates, will already be optimized. So what, what I took from that is that if you build your own email from scratch, even using FeedbackWiz, um, it might not be optimized for mobile or other devices. However, if you use one of their templates and then you can completely change it in whichever way you see fit, um, it will be optimized for um, mobiles and tablets. So bear that in mind when you're writing your emails. Um, load a template first rather than building it from scratch and then just edit it as much as you want. Um, right, point number eight. Scroll through my book. I wrote pages on this. Um, again, going to help your conversions because it's going to help with the content of your email. And this is you have to buy your competitors' products so you get access to their email sequences. I done this, and my review rate went way up. Like this is the main thing that helped my. Um, conversion when it came to reviews. I bought every single product on page one relevant to my niche um, and only only like three of them were actually running an email sequence because the other guys had just established themselves like years ago and they're just relying on having like six seven hundred reviews but there was this one guy this one new seller who had like 220 reviews in a ridiculous amount of time so bought his product and it turns out he had this really awesome email sequence so I mimicked it don't copy it because that's unethical but mimic it what is he saying understand why he's saying what he's saying and then mimic that make it relevant to your product and push that out there and it worked for me and that's probably the best advice you'll get um, in regards to email optimization um, I'll add a bonus point here quickly actually um, so I'll, I'll make this 11 points so this will be point number nine don't make your emails too long. Uh, people are worried about only sending one email because it's against terms of service or whatever. I don't send just one email. I don't think anyone sends just one email. Don't be scared to send more than one email because if you're sending one email, it's going to be too long. The problem with having an email that's too long is that all the relevant content is going to be at the bottom and no one reads the bottom. If you open an email from a seller, you're going to read what's on screen, maybe, and then you're going to click back. You're not, you're not going to scroll through an email right to the bottom. The point of it being too long is that if you're if the relevant information is at the bottom, i.e. redirecting them to your page to leave a review, they're not getting to that. So that means the alternative is that if your email is still the length it is if you're only sending one, you're then pushing that to the top of the email. 
So essentially, your cu your customer is opening an email that immediately just says, "Hey, give me a review," and then underneath that, you're you're introducing yourself, which is the wrong way around. But you can't have it the other way around because no one's going to read the bottom bit. Do you see what I'm saying? So you need to segment your emails in a way that um, clearly lays out. Uh, I've actually got a template. Sorry, my camera keeps uh, freezing. And um, yeah, I've actually got a template that um, walks through sort of the perfect layout to an email with um, regards to introducing yourself, building a relationship, and then asking for their review. There is a structure to an email. Um, like I said in previous videos, I have a background in psychology. I know how to how to write an engaging um, and emotive email sequence that sort of gauges your customer to want to give you that review. So that's just a bonus tip. Don't make your emails too long. Segment them into different emails and your conversion will, will um, sky high. I promise. Maybe. Uh, point number 10. Um, you can start PPC uh, with no reviews. Again, I won't get too much into this because the video is longer than I thought it would be and I've got another video on this already. Social proof, i.e. reviews, is becoming less and less relevant thanks to the day and age we've grown up in um, with regards to immediate gratification and objectivity. Being able to look at something regardless of views, uh, reviews and say, well, actually, this is a better product for this you know, X amount of reasons, regardless of it having less reviews. So don't be scared to run PPC the second your um, product gets into Amazon. You will get reviews. It may be slower initially. Yes, but it's also going to be cheaper than doing a product launch, which you don't. I don't think product launches are relevant at all. I've never done one. I've had success with every single one of my products. Never done a launch. All I do is PPC. The second my product hits Amazon. Uh, step number 11 now is um, always remain terms of service compliant. You don't ever want to get to the point where you go to bed thinking, holy crap, is my business actually still going to be there tomorrow when I wake up? Because I've known people that have... Uh, had this really amazing business, but they're doing these uh, shady things that Amazon are heavily against. Uh, and I've known people to go out of business because they've woke up to an email from Amazon saying, "Tough luck, you know, we know what you're up to, um, and we're not going to allow you to rectify this because what you've been doing, you've been doing for a long time, and it's blatantly against terms of service." So this is probably the biggest tip. Uh, no matter how tough times get, because times will get tough always remain terms of service compliant and you will have nothing to worry about. Your only, your only worry will be selling your product, which sounds like a big worry, but in hindsight, if you're also worrying about your business being shut down overnight, that's not a big worry because there are things we can do to help increase your sales, but there are, there are less things we can do to get your account back up and running, especially if you know that you've been doing something wrong. So I'll leave the video as that because it's been a long ass video. Uh, I definitely went out longer than I thought. Like I said, uh, it's been a really controversial couple of days for me. I really didn't expect it. Um, but, you know, the, the Facebook group have been re really supportive. And I've had loads of emails, um, well, not emails, private messages on Facebook from you guys. Uh, and I really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. It really does. And uh, keep up the good work, everybody. I know um, everybody's working hard and we're all working to our limits. But keep pushing it. 2019 is almost here. Uh, I wish you guys the best Q4 of what's left of it. Um, and 2019, hopefully we can all come together and build on something big for 2019. I just, I have this feeling 2019 is going to be a big year uh, for myself and for people around me. And uh, I want you guys to be involved in that. Um, and it's not because I'm doing anything special. It's just, I don't, I don't know. I just have a feeling about 2019. My wife is pregnant. She's going to give birth in 2019. Uh, I'm expanding my business even more in 2019. Um... A lot of things are happening, and uh, I'm dead excited about it. And you guys should be excited too, because the start of a new year is a chance to reinvent yourself. And I don't mean New Year's resolutions, because they're BS, they don't work. Trust me, they don't work. But uh, it's it's a fresh start, and that does work. So uh, anyway, I wish you guys all the best. Thank you for watching. I know it's been a long video. Um, oh, so phone's going off. Um, yeah, um, like, share... So you know, if if you liked it, like it, share it if you if you liked it. Uh, please subscribe. It helps me out. It helps me reach you guys. Um, it also helps you guys 
uh, you know, notified every time I upload a video, the moment I uh, upload it. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'll, I'll sign off. So, uh, and oh, and join, join the group. I made my own Facebook group because everyone was telling me to. So uh, yeah, join the group. Like, share, subscribe, join the group, and I'll see you guys uh, pretty soon. And uh, oh, tomorrow, tomorrow. Hi, it's me again. Uh, tomorrow, I might not up upload a video tomorrow because we've got um, a 20 week scan. Um, which is going to occupy quite a lot of the day because after the scan we're going to probably go out celebrate somewhere um, because if you don't know the 20 week scan is the gender reveal so we're going to find out tomorrow if we're having a little boy or a girl which is going to be amazing either way um, so anyway I will leave it at that uh, God bless you all, I love you all, thank you for watching and uh, I'm sorry for the controversy I've caused, see you later